you guys so much for jumping on to this info session. Um, today we're going to be going over TGIF's grant cycle, specifically the spring grant cycle, um, the timeline, what the process looks like, uh, what kind of like ideas you'll need to brainstorm, what like requirements you'll need to meet, um, pretty much everything you need to know about this whole entire process and how you can get funding for your project. Um, so we're just going to do a quick land acknowledgement. Uh, next slide. So yes, we would like to begin by acknowledging that we're on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Ohlone people. Um, and just like a small reminder, if you would like to pay your Shumi land tax to the Soko Reate Land Trust, I might be pronouncing that wrong, and they are a community-based organization run by Ohlone and Indigenous women that is working to rematriate the Chochenyo and Karakina uh, Ohlone lands back to its people. And now we're going to go into more formal introductions of the TGIF team. Um, yeah, if someone wants to start us off, maybe Carly, since you're on the, the left side. Great, yeah. Hi, my name is Carly Baker. Um, I use she they pronouns. Like I said at the beginning, I am the TGIF manager. Um, so I'm a full-time professional staff person. Um, you'll be working with potentially uh, any of our staff, but um, at the end of the day, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email's here, and then my email will also be at the end of the presentation. Um, I've been a staff member at UC Berkeley for about six months now, and I um, previously was a TGIF grant recipient uh, when I was an undergrad here doing work with um, Student Gardens and the Berkeley Student Food Collective. Tiffany? Yeah, awesome. Okay, yeah, like I said, my name is Tiffany, use the shooter pronouns. Um, I've been a program associate with TGIF for three semesters, and yeah, not much more to add, but uh, you can totally book a one-on-one -on -one and you'll speak to either me, Josh, Taylor, or Carly too, and she's on there. Um, and we can talk to you about your project and basically like help you out and brainstorm your ideas and your application. Or if you are, once you become uh, a project leader, we'll obviously help you um, figure out your project as well. And I'll pass it to Josh. Um. Like I said, not much more to share that we haven't already. Um, all of our emails uh, lines down on the uh, card, I suppose. I just want to extend the invite if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to reach out through email or otherwise book a one-on-one. -on -one. We're all very excited to help you guys and hear where you're going with your projects. Uh, yeah, same. Um, again, hi, Taylor, she, her pronouns, also a program associate. And we're looking forward to meeting with you or talking to you about your projects and one-on-ones. Okay, cool. With that, we can move on to the agenda. Um, and yeah, so this is a brief overview of everything we're going to talk about today. First, we're going to just briefly introduce like what is the Green Initiative Fund? Like, why are we here? What do we stand for? Um, what is the history and our long-term legacy on campus? Uh, then two, we're going to dive deep into grant cycles, the difference between the fall mini grant and then the spring grant, which is um, bigger grants. And then we're going to just go talk about the spring timeline and what you need to know about how you're going to apply for the spring, what you need prepared, um, as well as the scoring rubric for that. And lastly, we're going to talk about the application process, talk about the environmental justice section of the uh, application. And then we're going to talk about the fiscal sponsorship, which can be kind of a confusing topic. Um, and then we're going to talk about post-funding steps, like when you would receive the funding and all of that stuff. Okay, perfect. Um, what is TGIF? So the Green Initiative Fund is a student fee referendum, which basically means that it's um, funded by students. So every student pays $9 per semester uh, to our fund our grant. Um, and that is why we care so much about projects that impact students and impact the campus. Um, because these funds are basically like student dollars, we really wanna make sure that the students are the ones who are benefiting from this program and that we're really impacting like their lives um, on campus. And I think at the end, it just lists some of the projects um, that like are related to sustainability that we have funded before. And that can be modes of transportation, increasing energy and water efficiency, restoring habitat, promoting environmental slash food justice, or reducing the amount of waste um, created on campus. But of course, that is just a small list. We, there are so many different topics that TGIF um, has seen in projects. So do not feel like limited at all by what's listed there. 
Okay, and this is just some examples of some of the projects that TJF has funded. And I'm sure these, some of these look very familiar. Berkeley Student Food Collective, um, the composting bins, Leaflet, uh, which is like an environmental news organization, the student co-op, uh, and Berkeley Action Initiative, which I believe is like, um, was like an event. And yeah. Okay. And this is just by the numbers. Since 2008, we have funded over uh, $3 million, um, 270 plus projects, and 400 plus student internships. Okay, now we're gonna go into project logistics. Um, so just the basics of what you, your eligibility requirements, I guess. Um, all UC Berkeley student staff and faculty are eligible to apply. Projects must uh, direct, oh, Oh gosh, so sorry, <laughs> Josh. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Um, projects must directly address sustainability on campus in some capacity, um, and they uh, must require some sort of outreach or educational aspect. So that can be student engagement, community engagement, or let's say a webinar or an info session, something like that. And then projects must be able to acquire quantitative or qualitative metrics. Uh, and every project needs either a campus department chart string or CalLink student organization to house the funds in. And an example of that could just be the club that you're in that's um, really like related to your project and they you have an agreement with them that you want to house your funds under them. Or you can talk to a professor who is engaged or mentoring your project and ask them to be like your stand-in um, to, have, to have your like funds housed there. Um, but yeah, I will pass it to Josh now. Thanks. Yeah. So I'm going to do a quick overview of the two different grant cycles that TJF offers. Um, all of you are currently, hopefully, planning on applying to the spring grant cycle, which is currently ongoing. But just in case, I'm going to do a quick overview of the fall mini grant cycle as well. As the name suggests, it begins during the fall semester. It is a mini grant, meaning that any asset you make uh, should not exceed more than $5,000. So $5,000 is the absolute max. It's a simplified single application phase, no abstracts, no multi-step uh, application. You submit your application for up to $5,000. The committee will review it and let you know whether or not you're funded. It's ideal for smaller projects or shorter projects as well. The spring grant cycle, which is again, what we're all hopefully applying towards, uh, we ask that grants exceed $5,000. There's no, formal upper cap. Typically speaking, though, projects will be between twenty dollars and $30,000. We've had grants that have gone up to, I think, $100,000, but typically speaking, we are one of the smaller uh, student fee funds. So anything that large, we have to weigh consideration of often funding multiple other projects against, which isn't to say that you can't apply or you won't be successful if you do apply, but uh, just wanted to kind of give you a sense of where most projects land in terms of their budgets. The spring grant cycle is made up um, into two different phases, the abstract phase and the application phase. The abstract phase itself has an optional early abstract phase. This, as the name suggests, is not mandatory. We encourage you very strongly to submit an early abstract because submitting an early abstract allows us to give you feedback and also allows the committee who will make the final decision on your project to give you feedback. Uh, if you submit an early abstract, you have all the sorts of concerns that the committee would otherwise have. You're able to take those and integrate them into a much stronger abstract submission for the mandatory abstract deadline. We'll talk a little bit about the timing later, but that is the point at which the committee will decide whether or not to invite you into the final application phase. So once all of the abstracts have been submitted, uh, certain projects the committee thinks have promise or want to hear more about will be invited into the application phase. At this point, once all the applications are received, the committee will vote on which projects actually receive funding. So it's a two-step process. And then on the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about the spring grant process. So first things first, hopefully you guys are already in this first stage. It sounds like all of you are just thinking about what sort of projects you want to fund, what interest areas or what communities do you want to support? Uh, does it have an environmental justice aspect? We'll talk a little bit more about the TGIF environmental justice focus, but considering whether or not you are serving underserved uh, or underprivileged communities, 
how you are impacting the campus community at large are major questions to be considering at this point. Uh, as we mentioned, we're a student fee fund. So we want to make sure that benefits are going to students, particularly students who might otherwise be receiving uh, the same campus benefits. Grant application, or in this particular case, the abstract, uh, we do have, as far as I'm aware, every single successful uh, spring grant application on our website, which is quite a lot and can be a little overwhelming, I imagine, but we have a bunch of wonderful examples of what successful abstracts and applications look like on our website, tgif.berkeley.edu. So taking a look at that, taking a look at the abstract itself and just writing, really. The other thing to start considering at this moment is who you are going to need to talk with, what other existing campus organizations, whether it's your fiscal or agent or your sponsoring organization, or whether there are some other organizations you want to interface with to make sure that they are also okay with the project. Uh, Cameron, you mentioned that you wanted to work with the POC co-op housing. So making sure that, you know, I, I assume, but making sure that everyone in the uh, co-ops are on board with your project. Same thing with, if you wanted to work with a on-campus housing, making sure that the housing department is on board with your project. Finally, once all of your abstracts are done, it's time to take it to the submission. As you mentioned, the optional early abstract is due February 11th by 5 p.m. The mandatory abstract, and this is the one you absolutely must have something in for, is March 11th. So February 11th is for optional. That one will get you feedback. The mandatory one you must submit. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, is it the 10th? It's the 10th, my, my apologies. Um, yes, so February 10th, excuse me, is the optional abstract. You need to, uh, you can submit one here and this way you get feedback from the committee and from us. The mandatory abstract March 10th is absolutely necessary. Even if you've already submitted to the optional early abstract deadline, you must submit again to the mandatory deadline in order for you to be considered for the application phase. If you're invited back for the application phase, um, that will be due on the 14th uh, by 5 p.m. Um, and once you get invited to the application, you'll need to be submitting both your application, the metric spreadsheet, and then finally the approvals of the different organizations that we talked about previously. Uh, so next slide. What makes a project stand out? So the first one, as we've mentioned before, is environmental and social justice serving underrepresented or marginalized communities, particularly. This is something that TGF is very passionate about supporting. As a student fee fund, we want to make sure that all members of our campus community are being served and given the same levels of environmental benefits that otherwise they might not. So considering this, especially if you can integrate it into your project as a whole, something that really, really makes the project stand out to the rest of our committee. Likewise, student engagements, um, and metrics, making sure that you have a clear idea of how you can prove your impact to the campus community, particularly to the students of the campus community, whether this is education, serving, providing internships or stipends, anything like that. Creativity, again, if it's interesting and it makes us think, wow, we've never seen this before, that's something the committee is always really passionate about. Um, as I mentioned, we do have quite a few different examples of past projects. So you can take a look both to find support for previously successful projects and also where there might be a gap that you can fill. And then finally, long-term sustainability. TGIF is intended as seed funding, meaning that we are not open to repeatedly funding a project um, every single grant cycle. If you need funding for multiple years in order to get, it, uh, to get your project off the ground or to get it self-sustainable, we ask that you simply apply for all the different years you believe you're going to need to be sustainable, and then make sure that you have clear transition plans if you graduate before your project uh, is sustainable, or to make sure that it will live on after you leave the Cal community. Slide is the committee guidelines. So the committee goes through these following guidelines um, to facilitate discussion and to kind of understand where projects rank among each other. 
Uh, first one, innovative contribution to the campus community, creativity functionally, environmental justice, social justice, sustainability of project when TJF funding ends, clarity of implementation strategy and project goals, budget, timeline, and student participation. This is non-inclusive and often committee members will be bringing their own expertise as we have a uh, wide uh, number of experienced professionals represented on our community, including multiple uh, undergraduate and graduate student community members. But I do want to highlight a couple of things that always are in the conversation. Uh, creativity, environmental justice, and the budget itself, because we want to see that this is something new. This is something that benefits the campus community. And finally, the last thing that the is always concerned about is how realistic does it seem that you can carry these out. So if you can provide a detailed budget or detailed plan of how you're going to take your project from the idea to the final product, that's always something that makes the committee very, very happy to see and really boost your application. So now I'll pass it off to Taylor for the timing. Great. Uh, thanks, Josh. This is uh, another representation of some important dates to consider. Um, first thing is today, obviously, we're all here at this virtual info session. Uh, we have another in-person info session on March 3rd, uh, but attendance at both is not required. It's all the same information, but if you're interested, um, feel free to attend again. Uh, but the three sort of major deadlines where you're going to be actually submitting things to us are highlighted in green. Um, the first being uh, Friday, February 10th at 5 p.m. is the deadline for submitting an early abstract. Um, this, however, is optional. You do not have to submit an early abstract to us. Um, however, there are some advantages, as Josh mentioned earlier, uh, one of those being um, you can get feedback from us and the committee and revise your abstract to create a stronger abstract abstract for the mandatory deadline on March 10th. Uh, the second advantage being of submitting early being that uh, if the committee is really impressed with your application, you can be sort of um, leapfrog to the invite only stage in which you would be directly submitting your final application um, instead of submitting a second abstract. Um, so again, that's an optional deadline, but there are some advantages to submitting early. Um, March 3rd, as I said, is our in-person info session. And then through February and April, we have uh, plenty of one-on-one -on -one appointments. Uh, if you want to talk to us about your abstract or just um, questions or confusion about spring grants in general, feel free to schedule an appointment with us. Um, March 10th, that's another Friday, and at 5 p.m. is the deadline to submit um, a mandatory abstract. This one is not optional, <laughs> unlike the first deadlines. You have to submit your abstract here. And then um, Friday, April 14th at 5 p.m., um, by invite only, as mentioned previously, is the deadline to submit um, your final application, as well as some other materials like your budget and expected metrics. Next slide, please. Uh, going into TJF's environmental justice priority system, um, at CERC and TJF, this is one of our values and we really want to reflect that in the grant process. Uh, if you're not sure what environmental justice is, we provided a definition on the left-hand side, uh, but to explain the priority system, we basically consider uh, environmental justice grant proposals before other projects. Uh, that's not to say that if your project does not have an environmental justice component, um, no penalty at all. It's just that environmental justice projects are considered first before all others. Next slide, please. Uh, here are some things that you can expect uh, post-funding if the committee chooses to fund your project. Um, expectations for project leaders include a semesterly project check-in with uh, one of TJF staff, one of us, uh, until your project ends. You are, of course, welcome to meet with us uh, way more than that, but we only require one check-in per semester, so pretty easy. Um, we also expect you to be gathering project metrics, whether those are qualitative or quantitative, or both. Um, yeah, both is even better um, throughout the process of the project. Um, again, because we're a student fee fund, we want to really be sure that we uh, have evidence of all the great impacts that your project has. Uh, and then finally, to close out your project, whenever that project ends, uh, we're expecting a final project report, final poster, uh, and finalized metrics. Next slide, please. Uh, to recap, um, 
some things that you can expect or things that you should be preparing for the spring grant cycle. Um, you'll have to gather any necessary approvals. So again, if you're working with uh, very closely with campus organizations, uh, approvals from said organizations, as well as determining who your sponsoring org or fiscal agent is going to be, uh, that can either be a campus department or a registered student organization. Uh, identifying potential project metrics. If you're not sure what your metrics might be or what you would be measuring, uh, come talk to us about it in a one-on-one because -on -one, that's really essential for any project application. Um, and related, uh, reach out to us with any questions or concerns. Again, those one-on-one -on -one appointments are available and you can also email us. Uh, submit your abstracts on time. Um, those are Fridays at 5 p.m., not midnight. So be sure to make those deadlines because we don't accept late applications. And then finally, um, if you're invited to the final round, um, submitting a final application is also necessary. And please note that if you, your project does get funded, um, decisions will come in May, 2023, but um, the money is usually slow to be dispersed by administration. So you can expect to actually receive the funds in the fall. Uh, this is a screenshot of our website. If you've never been there before, we have a lot of great resources there, um, past projects, as well as members of the committee and other resources. Uh, but most important is this apply for grant funding tab that's highlighted in this picture here. And um, that's where you can find the application as well as all the dates that we just mentioned in this info session. Um, and then for other funding resources, if you're interested, we have a page on our site um, if you want to check that out. And I'll just open that real quick. Um, we offer quite a few. The ASUC offers some. Um, so this is a pretty robust list for you all to use um, at your leisure. And let me head back to the info session. There we go. Can you all see the info? Or, OK, great. All right, so thank you all so much for listening to our presentation. Um, here to answer any questions that you all have. Um, we also have our information on the sheet um, on the bottom of this page as well. Um, one thing that I will just really emphasize is that one of the um, biggest potential problems is not identifying a place to hold your money early. Um, like was said at the beginning and throughout, you, it can be a campus department or a registered student organization, um, but you will need to start making those decisions and reaching out to people, um, you know, in the March, April um, period, because that is going to be something that's going to be on your application. You're either going to have to have someone who is um, with on CalLINK, if it's a club, you know, so someone ha who has access to the club finances to approve the project, or you're going to need someone on the department side who is able to handle um, campus departmental money transfers. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer that. It's a really confusing process, um, but I would say that that's um, one of the biggest hurdles that projects face, um, and that can severely affect your timeline. Um, so just wanted to give a little update about that because I am dealing with that right now for quite a few projects. Any questions?